So what's a Musselman curry? Right, it's well, it's a Thai curry. So okay, really, nice. so full of flavour, fresh, fragrant. You know, you've got all your lemongrass in there, you've got your chilli, you've got basil to lighten it up, fish sauce. And uh, we're going to put um, potatoes and pumpkin mm. in it as well. And we've got, of course, we're going to cook it all in the coconut milk. Oh. And uh, we've got curries, but you could quite easily make this vegetarian if you so desired. Very good. I'm looking forward to getting stuck into this. It smells already delicious. Imagine what it smells like when it's finished. We'll get into it very soon. And we'll have the full recipe for you to try at home as well. Well, it is great to have you with us and the Beko Kitchen for a Malaysian classic. You thought it was a Thai classic. Well, it's, it's South Malaysian. Thai. Yeah, no, it's all right. Very it's close. Taste good. A muscle and curry. <laughs> okay, where are we starting? What are we need to do because it's right, so delicious. We've got some onions and garlic, so yep. we're just going to chop them up nice and finely and we're going to start sweating them up. Fine chopping, look at that. <laughs> hey, that's a skill. <laughs> Yeah, no, no cooking practice on holiday, no, have you? No, I didn't dice anything. Just diced with <laughs> life, really. Okay. Right, a little bit of oil in there. Yep. And then we're gonna we'll start off with the onions and garlic, and we'll sweat that off. Okay. Back into it, eh? God, you're really out of practice. A bit more oil in there. Oh, a bit more oil. Okay. <laughs> Should know the French just cook everything in oil and butter, don't they? Yeah, that's it. I tell you, that's the secret of French secret cooking. Secret to cooking, here. Yeah. Right, so a couple of minutes, sweat that down over a medium heat so they come up nice and uh, get the sweetness out of it and um, nice and translucent. Okay. And then what we're going to do, we've got this uh, Massaman curry paste and then yep. we're going to fry that off and that's going to okay, release cool. lots of flavour. So in about a minute you can pop that in. And then I'm just going to peel this pumpkin. So just um, we've cut it in half, we've scooped all the seeds out and then just carefully on a flat surface so it doesn't roll around, you can just peel it. Or if you've got one of those speed peelers as well, you can actually do it with a speed peeler. Okay. I've discovered. Uh, right, and then we're just going to dice that up. And as I said before, we're going to we're going to put pumpkin through here, so it's really nice um, uh, dish to do with pumpkin. You know, mm. lots of flavour. Works pumpkin works really well with coconut. Lots of those um, sort of Thai flavours, Malaysian flavours, chilli, the heat, the spices. So it's a great one. And you know, if you didn't want to put the prawns in and keep it all vegetarian, okay, great. That's, that's brilliant. So you can do that with the potatoes. You know, it gives you a, it gives you a nice sort of um, base to the curry. Time yep, for this. Yep, yep, pop that, that in now. No, I was just thinking too, traditionally this usually takes about 24 hours, so we're doing the speed version, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, you, you know, you're more than welcome to, um, you know, make your own curry paste at home uh, and get all those flavours in. But I mean, you know, you can go to the, I can't believe I'm saying this now, doing what Mike does, go uh, to the yeah. supermarket and just buy it. But you can get some really good um, paste now on the market. And uh, I mean, that's what it's all about, you know, especially a midweek dinner, you don't want to be, you know, you don't want to be making your, um, you know, paste for hours and hours and True. And, and what do you and, look for in a, in, a, in a paste to make sure you've got the right one? Oh, Country actually, of I origin? Mean, <laughs> it's obviously different brands and they, they do different things uh, or they've got different flavours. Right. So oh, that you know, so good. I think it's I think it's a case of just you know trying different ones and, and going okay. to a trusted brand and you know if you like it, stick to it. Okay, nice. And if you don't like it, then make it yourself. Okay, yeah. And if you, you do make it yourself, make a big batch and then you can keep it. <laughs> yeah, true. You can freeze it, really, couldn't you? Can you freeze well, you it? Know, well, the yeah, paste, yeah, or do you just yeah, keep it in a jar well, in the you fridge? Can keep, you can keep it in a jar. Oh. Well, I'm just going to add a splash of coconut now. I'm going to turn the heat up, and then we're going to fry it in that coconut uh, milk. Oh, it smells incredible. And you'll see now, you know, you'll, well, you'll see, you'll, you'll smell all those flavours coming out. And you really want to sort of toast those spices and just make it come alive because this is going to be the base. I mean, you know, if you've got your paste already made, it's really, really fast. Okay, great. Okay, I'm just going to chop the potatoes up. So just being careful as well, make sure they're all the sort of same size so it cooks nice and evenly. That's the key. And you're not worrying about peeling those potatoes? No, 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 no that's nice good. Just little ba baby potatoes, that's really good. Cool. And you notice I'm cooking, cutting the potatoes a little bit smaller than the pumpkin because they're going to take, uh, well, the pumpkin's going to cook less than the potato. OK, I see. Right, so once we've got uh, to that stage now, I'm going to put some cinnamon yes, and like some a... cardamom in there as well. So cardamom pods, I'm just going to lightly crush them and then pop them in. But obviously, remember to take them out before you serve it. OK, great. Yeah, I can smell all those spices being released as we fry this up here. Incredible. You know, and this is an important stage as well, so just really spend some time, like, you know, Three, four minutes, just sort of frying that over a medium heat. If it's getting too hot, just turn it down a little bit, but you can you know you can see it's bubbling, you can yep. hear it frying, and all that flavour as well and smell is uh, aromas coming off it. So that bubbling is okay? That's really good, yeah. Okay, great. Woo! Get a whiff of that. Okay. So you can see um the liquid's sort of gone off now, it's okay, really sort good. of frying and spitting. So right, this is the next stage. So the cinnamon, the cardamom's in there. Yes. And this is a good idea as well. Like we've got the basil we're gonna put through the curry. 
Use the stalks. There's so much flavour in the stalks. Okay. You know, extra flavour. Little tip for you when you're cooking. Throw that in. You can take them out after, but it will give you lots of flavour. And are you just using normal basil, or are you using Thai basil? No, no, normal. Normal basil. Okay, good. All right, a little bit of brown sugar. Yep. Sweet the balance, it up a bit. Yeah, balance everything out. Nice. Got a little bit of fish sauce goes in now. Okay. And rest of the coconut milk. That goes in, stir it in, bring it up to the boil, and we'll turn it down to a simmer. And then what we're going to do is we've got our potatoes, pumpkin, that goes okay. in, and we just want to cook that until it's nice and tender. Just so there. probably just simmer it for about 20 minutes, uh, just until it softens down. And then we've got the prawns. And pretty much just before we serve, um, you know, a few minutes out before we serve, we're going to drop the prawn, prawns in there, okay. and then it's going to be nice and moist. So, so you don't want to overcook them. Absolutely and then we've got a little brilliant. bit of lime as well, which we're just going to finish it with it. As it cooks, about another sort of 20 minutes, you know, the sauce will reduce down a bit uh, more, come nice and thick, and the, the vegetables will be nice and soft, and that will help thicken the sauce as well a little bit. If you weren't a big fan of prawns, could you use some other type of meat? Oh, definitely. I mean, you, okay, you could, I mean, just do it the same. You could do uh, slice some chicken nice and finely and put that in. Yeah. Probably cook it a little bit longer so it's cooked through. Um, you know, you could do a beef one if you want, but I'd put the beef in a little bit earlier. You know, even like a, a short rib you could do in there and Ooh. cook it for a long time, like two, three hours, nice and slow. But you just maximise all those flavours in there. Brilliant. OK, and how do you know, just quickly, how do you know that this is simmering right? Is, do the bubbles on the outside, does that mean it's too high? or No, no, so, so bring it up to the boil so then it's really bubbly and then turn it down to your lowest setting and then you should s still see like a, you know, a few bubbles coming up okay. nice and slow, you know. And Good. then always just, you know, tip of the knife, just check your potatoes and check your pumpkin. But you'll be able to see it after a few minutes, well, after about 10 or 15 minutes, you'll see it. The, the edges will get nice and soft uh, and just check those centres are, um, you know, soft before you uh, put the prawns in. Because okay, once great. the prawns are in, you pretty much want to serve. And then we'll finish it with just some roughly chopped basil. We've got some crispy shallots. I'm going to toast some peanuts as well for the top and a little bit of uh, fresh red chilli on the top as well. So really nice and fresh. And then just serve it with some rice. Okay, good. Rice or crusty bread or... Now, while we're waiting for this to cook, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, my trip to France. You were so right because <laughs> you said the food... No, you said the food would be amazing. Oh, I, I had is. duck so many different ways. Beautiful. But one thing I noticed too, cheese over there. From oh. Arch, just about every time you'd finish a meal, they bring out a whole selection of cheese. And the quality and the textures and the flavours just so insane. good, isn't it? Not good for your waistline. <laughs> But, I, no, but you're on holiday, so no, no, that's what everyone said. They said, look, you're on holiday, don't worry about that when you get home. Um, but I loved all the sort of the creamy cheeses over there. And the thing is, you go to the markets, they were just so affordable. It must be a chef's dream when you're in oh, a place it's, like France. It's, you know, it's an amazing place. France is just one of those sort of meccas of food, mm. and, and Italy as well, and Spain. And, you know, they, they all just do it really simply, but really, really well. And it's just it's just great, isn't it? You know, you, you sit down on the beach and, and have the, you know, the cured ham oh. and the cheeses oh. and the... And just it's just simple but just amazing. And I went to Spain because it was close to where we were staying and you'd just go there for tapas for lunch. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. It's awesome, isn't it? I ate uh, a lot of squid, a lot of frog's legs. Frog's legs, did them. you like them? I like them, yeah. A cross between chicken and fish and uh, really Moorish. You just you know, <laughs> suck the frog <laughs> leg off pretty much, you know, just all it's the like a lollipop, isn't yeah, it? it was, yeah. Mm. Beautiful. So maybe we should cook some in the future. Some yeah, you can catch things. the frogs. Okay, <laughs> sweet. Won't be hard. <laughs> but we have been offered this, and it smells incredible, Matt. Get Thank stuck you. in. Good. Get stuck in. I will, don't you worry. <laughs>